Over the last few weeks, I have flown across the United States four separate times. Why? Because I wanted to get an answer to the question, which airline provides the best premium service from the Northeast of the United States out to the West Coast? You see, this is one of the most competitive routes in the world, and four major US airlines have thrown their best products at each other. I started with United, then flew JetBlue, Delta, and finally American Airlines. Over the next few minutes, I'm gonna share with you the results of that experiment, and I think, give you an idea about who the right airline for you might be. My name is Jeb Brooks, and I run a channel here on YouTube that's focused on commercial aviation and the passenger experience. I hope you'll consider, if you haven't already, clicking that red subscribe button below and be among the very first people to find out when I post a new video. You see, I'm making trip reports about travels all over the world, and I'd love to share them with you. For now, what we need to do is get started looking at the premium products from the Northeast to the West Coast of the United States. Let's go. So first things first, I think there are a couple of things I need to get out of the way. Point number one, I did my best to be as objective as I can despite any biases that I might have come in with. And second of all, I am judging airlines on one in-flight experience, which isn't entirely fair. But that's the premise, so let's get going. We're gonna start out by taking a look at United. Now, as I endeavor to be as honest and forthright with you about all of these experiences, I think it's fair to say I haven't flown on United in probably 20 years. We were on a 757 and it was a little bit of an older plane. It was showing its age and in fact the 757s that are used on this route are some of the oldest in the United fleet from what I understand. Now I think the, the seat itself was really comfortable. It was the same as the one we'll see here in a few minutes with Delta and uh, it was great if you're traveling with someone else. Really uh, e easy to get in and out of. Uh, even if somebody's sitting down, I've got to say, I think United was uh, on point with their meals. Their meal service was really good. From the appetizer, which for example, Delta has gotten, gotten away from, uh, the salad was good, the main course uh, was, was fine, wasn't quite as good as Americans, uh, certainly wasn't as good as Delta's, uh, but then they also offer a full, well, I'll call it a full meal before landing, a turkey wrap was offered before landing, which was far and away more than the other airlines provided. The service, it was great. The flight attendant was excited to be there, happy to serve us. It was a, it was a wonderful experience in that regard. I'll also say, depending on where you're leaving from in New York, Newark could make a lot of sense. Now, we were connecting from DC uh, through Newark and then on, so it wasn't that big a deal. Uh, depending on where you are in New York, uh, Newark could be a good alternative. So generally speaking, United, great if you're traveling with somebody else, really great service, more food than the other airlines provided, so that was, that was good. Uh, a little bit of a negative there, age of the aircraft. Love the fact that we had access to the lounge in Newark, that was great, so generally speaking, there's United. Now, let's move on to JetBlue. Somebody pointed out very early in the comments, and I really appreciate it, I really appreciate it. This JetBlue is a discount airline. Now it's 100% true that they're offering a premium product on this heavily competitive route uh, from the Northeast to the West Coast. However, they are a discount airline. So to have the same level of expectation of JetBlue is a little unfair. Um, I'm gonna talk about pricing at the end of the video because that's another kind of sensitive subject that came up a lot in the comments and I wanna make sure that I hit it in the right way. So. Remember, to, or, or, good reminder, JetBlue discount airline. If you get that mint suite traveling alone, you're, you're set up. Really good uh, setup there. I mentioned in the video, I did not quite get comfortable on the flight. It was not as comfortable a seat for me as I would have liked for what that's worth. Again, very subjective. Now, if you're working, if you're looking to work on uh, one of these flights, JetBlue could make a lot of sense for you because if you get in those mint suites, there are three power ports in there, all for you, every one for you. Also free fly-by or Wi-Fi, was no cost. A little persnickety at the beginning of the flight, they reset it, it worked perfectly. Unlike the other airlines, it was free. The other airlines, unless you have some kind of package or free pass, 
It's gonna be about 40 US dollars. The live TV, also an option that's available on Delta as well, uh, but they do offer live TV. Not a lot in the way of movies selection. Also worth mentioning, Mint is offered on a number of uh, routes, unlike the other products, not quite as widely uh, spread. Food, I, I know that I am totally, uh, I'm the only person out there who's criticized JetBlue's food, at least as far as I've seen, everybody seems to like it, but it was way, the, the, the horseradish was just way too powerful. Also, a bit of a negative, no club. So, JetBlue, great if you're traveling alone. Um, remember, it's a discount airline. You've gotta book those mint sweets early though, because they do go quickly. Uh, so they are appealing if that's what you're after. Now, let's turn our attention to Delta. I fly with Delta a lot, uh, so I feel like I wanna disclose that, as I will anything uh, that comes along in the channel, I wanna be very upfront with you. Uh, so, that said, I'm gonna be very uh, objective about this. The airplane was old. Uh, not quite as old as United's, uh, but it was an older airplane. Now, the this route, these routes, uh, rather, are served by Delta in a 767, which would be a slightly different experience than I had in the 757, but I was really uh, endeavoring to time these flights uh, to be about the same time each day so that it would be roughly the same experience. There were a few more cabin updates than United, but still, it was an older airplane. Um, by far, I think Delta is winning in the entertainment category. They had loads of movies, loads of new movies, loads of um, television. Uh, also, as I mentioned, live TV. Uh, internet was at cost. The food, I really did not do it justice in the video because um, people, it was the presentation didn't look great, but it was delicious. I think in terms of what I ate on the Transcon Throwdown, that meal was my favorite in terms of flavor. Delta. You know, not very differentiated from United, to be to be very frank. I, I, there's not a big difference. The seats are pretty much the same, uh, so uh, for what that's worth. Now, let's turn to American. And I went back and forth on this, guys. I, I could not make up my mind. Was it fair to compare American's first class product to these other airlines' business class products? And ultimately, I decided that it was. Uh, for two reasons. First of all, uh, the premise of the Transcon Throwdown was that we would analyze airlines uh, in terms of their premium products on this route. Premium products. And of course, American offers a first class uh, cabin. So I, I thought it was fair to, to take a look at. The second reason I decided it was fair to compare the American uh, airlines first class cabin to the others is because of price and we're gonna break down price at the end of the video but I paid less for the American Airlines first class seat from LA to New York than I did for the Delta business class seat from New York to LA now that could be because of timing and demand and all those things but ultimately I paid what I paid and uh, it was less than Delta so it seemed fair to compare the seat was very comfortable. It was far more adjustable than the Mint Suite with the same level of privacy, maybe even a little bit more. It was fun to see that seat in an A321. I've flown in, in similar seats on wide body jets, uh, but that was, that was a fun, uh, neat, neat thing to see. Uh, the meal experience was really uh, very good. The flavors, not quite as rich as, Ameri as uh, Delta's, However, the food itself was very well prepared, beautifully presented, uh, course by course. It was certainly first class in that regard. Um, the screen, difficult to, to manage. I'm kind of a, a stickler for two things when it comes to in-flight entertainment. The ease of pressing the buttons uh, on the screen or the remote and the in-flight um, headphones. Uh, as I mentioned, American won the headphones with the Bose. They lost the screen. It was very finicky, very difficult to use. As I mentioned, spectacular uh, service, and that flagship lounge, really special. So there you have it. That's the review of the four airlines, each kind of unique in their own way. Let's turn our attention to price. A couple of general points I'd like to make about price. First of all, airline pricing is incredibly dynamic. 
What you see when you research these fares may well be different than what I share with you on the screen. In fact, what I paid for the flights I took is different than what you'll see on the screen, but I figured it was a good starting point. Second thing I'd like to share, miles and points options are available on all of these airlines. Keep an eye out. And finally, everything I'm sharing is a one-way fare. United Premium Transcon service can be purchased for between $647 and as much as $744. JetBlue's Mint Cabin can be purchased for between $959 and $1,339. To be fair, there aren't as many of those $959 fares. Delta One service can be had for between $558 up to as much as $1,043. And finally, American Airlines Flagship First Service can be purchased for between $1,249 up to above $2,000. There you have it, the Transcon Throwdown. Now for the ultimate question, who's the winner? And I'll say this first, I think the best part about the Transcon Throwdown is that each of us in this community can have our own uh, ideas of who wins. And I hope you'll leave a comment below letting me know who you think the winner of the Transcon Throwdown was. But now, for my opinion, having experienced all four premium cabins on this highly competitive route, I will share with you today, right now, this moment, that I think the winner was American Airlines. That first class experience was just really, it was the top. I can't wait to hear your winner. So leave me a comment. If you like this video, if you like this series, click the thumbs up button. I sure would appreciate it. If you didn't for any reason, click the thumbs down button twice. I'm only kidding. In all sincerity, I hope if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It means the world to me. I have so much fun uh, sharing these experiences with you and I look forward to even more of them. But between now and whenever I post again, See you in the sky.